In Creole Parametric, you can design the mold necessary to manufacture a part. This is part four of a five part series where we are creating this mold design. Let's hop over to the model we were working on. Here we have our design. So far, we have started off with our reference model. We've designed our workpiece. We've put in some supplemental geometry. We did a an automatic mold volume, a reference part cutout. Then we did our plug and our sliders. And in the last video, we did our parting surface. Now we are ready to divide stuff up. So in this video, we will be doing the mold splits. And then we will create our mold components. Right now, I've got the workpiece visible. I actually don't need it. I'm going to hide it just so that's easier to see everything. There is an automatic volume. If I make it visible, you can't see what is on the inside. But the nice thing is I am able to select volumes out of the model tree so I can hide this and not use it. To create our splits, let's go to the mold volume dropdown. Here is the volume split command. As the tooltip tells us, we can split a mold volume into multiple volumes. That's what we want to do. I will click on the volume split command. It opens up a dashboard. The first thing that I need to select is the mold volume to split. I'm going to select the automatic volume. And again, I can pick that right out of the model tree. This automatic volume also has the reference part cut out with it. The next thing to select is the parting surface for splitting the mold volume. Let's click in the collector. Be aware from the references tab, you have the same information. Also, you can use the right mouse button to change between the split volume collector and the split surfaces collector. For the split surfaces, since they are surfaces, you have to pick them out of the graphics area. I can't just pick out of the model tree here. When I try to click on plug revolve, it is not working to fill in the collector. So let's go to the graphics area. Here is the quilt for the plug volume. I will click on it. Now Creo Parametric is doing some thinking and we can see the resulting mold volumes in orange. Let's go to the volumes tab. There are two different volumes in this case. If I select the first line, you can see that it's highlighting the big part. Let's go to volume two. This is going to be the actual plug itself. And you can rename the volumes from in here. I am going to call this the plug volume final and hit the enter key to take the value. And this other volume is an intermediate of the main volume. I'm not going to use it later on, but I'm going to give it some kind of name to signal to myself that it's not one of the final volumes that I want to use. This is good. Let's hit the check mark out of the model tree. And now we can see the plug volumes on the screen. Once again, I'm going to start making things easier to see. I actually don't need the reference model. Let's hide that while we are at it. Next down here, we have the plug volume that was used to do the split. I'm going to hide that one. I still need the sliders. Let's see. For the next one, here's the plug volume final. I don't need to see that. Let's hide it as well so you can see a hollow portion in the model. We do have a volume here, which is the intermediate one. And once again, I'm going to hide it because I can just pick that right out of the model tree for doing my next split. Let's go to the volume split command once more. And again, right now the split volume collector is active. Let's pick that main intermediate right out of the model tree. This time I am going to use my parting surface. Let me use the right mouse button to activate the split surfaces collector. I will grab the parting surface that I created in the last video. Once again, Creo Parametric is doing some thinking. It comes up with two different results. Let's go to the volume tab again. And here we have volume one. 
that is the bottom. That's an intermediate of the core because I still need to subtract the sliders. Let me call that core intermediate. I think I'm going to need two of them. Let me hit the enter key. And I'm just naming it so I could recognize what it is in the model tree. And then volume two. This is actually going to be the final of the cavity. So let me call it cavity final. That's how I like to do things. And there might be a more efficient way of doing this, but this works for me. I might end up creating a couple extra unnecessary volumes, but I really don't care about that. Okay, so let's see. We have our cavity final. Let's hide that one. And we have our core intermediate. Once again, I can pick that right out of the model tree. So just to make the screen easy to understand, I'm going to hide that. Also, we have our parting line. I don't need to see that. Here we have our parting surface. I don't need to see that. I only have the two last remaining volumes for the sliders. So let's do our next split. Let's go to the volume split command. For the volume to be split, I'm going to select the core intermediate. For the first volume, let me go to split surfaces and then pick the slider one volume. Once again, it does some thinking. Let's go to the volumes tab and volume one. All right, so that is another intermediate of the core. Let me call this core intermediate two. And I think there's a way, I think you can actually uncheck these if you don't want to generate a volume from them, but now nah, let's just generate it. Again, it's just gonna be an extra volume in the model. And here we have the slider one final. So let me call this a name to remember that slider volume slider final one or I could call it on a left slider depending on your perspective let me hit the enter key and then hit the check mark so there we have our splits over here now I no longer need to see this particular volume let's hide it and we don't need to see this slider over on the left now we're ready for our final split Let's go to the volume split command. And this time I just left it visible on the computer screen. This is the one that we want to split, the second intermediate. Let me right click and go to split surfaces and pick the right volume. And once more, it does some thinking. Let's go to the volumes tab, click the first volume. And that is, this is going to be our core final. And hit the enter key. Volume two, this is going to be the second slider final. So I'll call it slider final. If I can type final two, hit the enter key. Now we can hit the check mark. And the sliders are created. Let's see, I don't need to see this volume anymore. Let's hide that one. And we have slider final two visible. Let's make this one visible as well. And our cavity final. So these are the five parts. Oh, I need my plug. Where are you, plug? Plug volume final. Let's make this one visible. I do have one other intermediate that is still being shown. So these are the volumes to define the components for our mold. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's click on the mold component command. Be aware that there is a drop down list where you can assemble mold components, create mold components. We're going to use the cavity insert command. This will create cavity insert parts from mold volumes. And let me expand this dialog box. You can see all the different volumes that are in here. This is why I use my naming convention. So we have cavity final, core final. I'm using the control key to select the ones that I want to use. And there you can see some other additional volumes that I created along the way. 
Let's make this a little bit longer, see if I can get, can I get this area longer? Probably not. Let's take a look at the five components that will be created. I will use the select all button to grab all the different volumes. Then we can use the open icon underneath copy from to grab the start part that I want to use. I will use my company standard metric model based definition start part and use the open button. And let's see, here we have, let me go to the top of the list. I could see that there was a scroll bar here. Here's the one called cavity final for the name of the part. I don't want it called this. I want to call it my part number 7110-mold-cavity. That's a good name. And let's go to the next one. We'll call this one the 7110 core final. Or not core final, I want to call it mold core. Then we have our plug. And this component's name will be 7110-mold-plug. And then we have our first slider. Change the name. Let me save a little effort. Let me just use some backspace. And 7110-mold-slider1. Let me hit the Enter key. And the last one in here. Let's name this one. 71010-mold-slider2, hit the enter key. Let me make this a little bit wider and make this one wider. And so there you can see the components that we're going to end up creating. Let's click the OK button. And if you take a look in the model tree over on the left, it ended up creating our various different components. Let's take a look at them in their own separate windows. Let's go to the plug. Let's use the open button from the mini toolbar. And here is the plug volume. You'll notice that there's automatic coloring of the surfaces uh, based on where they're touching or you know where they came from. I forget what the color scheme is. So that's what the plug will look like. Let's then go to our cavity. I'll just pick it right in the graphics area this time. And let's rotate over so you can see what this will look like. And it looks really good. Let's go back to the window. Now we'll take a look at one of the sliders. So this is the slider over on one side and take a slider or look at the slider over on the other side which should be fairly similar and finally let's take a look at the core component and looky there you can see where the sliders fit in where the plug fits in and where the cavity would sit on top. So those are our mold components and that is all that we are going to do in this video. In the next video, we will create the molding. In other words, the component that would be the result of this mold design and we will also do the mold opening. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.